Hello, this is Eric, and as you know, Hollywood ruins everything. Let's dip into the Disney Dark Ages. In 1973, Disney obtained film rights to The Chronicles of Prydain, which by all accounts was an amazing series of novels. Many people were actually excited about working on a movie version. However, due to the animators of the time being unable to animate human characters, it got pushed back and reimagined again and again and again. Two directors, two producers, many concept artists, and nine writers were what it took to actually release this movie 12 years after starting production. At the time, it was the most expensive animated movie ever made, and it was so bad that it failed both critically and in the box office. It nearly led to the bankruptcy of Walt Disney Animation. This is considered one of Disney's worst animated movies. This is The Black Cauldron. The story begins by telling us about the Black Cauldron and how getting it will give you the power of a dark god or something. Having watched the whole movie, I can say we don't need to know this. They reintroduce the cauldron later. Basically, it's the magical artifact thing that the villain wants. Then we're introduced to two characters, our hero Terran and... Uh... You know, even after getting all the way through the film, I don't know who this guy is. He has a magical pig that can see the future. No idea where he got it, he just has it. But to protect it from the Horned King looking for the Black Cauldron, Terran has to take the pig somewhere safe. They knew the secret of Hinwen's power. But no, the Horned King has discovered it. We must make sure he never uses it to find the Black Cauldron. The Horned King only needs the pig to find the Black Cauldron. But if he can find the pig, why can't he find the cauldron? And really, why is it a pig? Why not a cow? Or a sheep? I mean, points for creativity. Something like this is usually a magic amulet, but outside of giving us a more creative way to use magic, being a pig doesn't really add anything. The story would be almost the same if it were anything else. But I'm getting off track. Before leaving, we get to know Terran a bit. Terran wants to be a great warrior, praised and acknowledged as a hero, but is, um, um, uncle? Mentor? Who is this guy? Now, now, no more dreaming. You have chores to do. Another dream, Taran. Dreams are unauthorized. Work every day until you're dead. So yeah, after trying to squash Taran's hopes and dreams, old dude sends him off on a magical quest. Taran is so caught up in his dreams that he accidentally lets the pig run away. Oh, no. That's what you get for having hopes for the future. Now squash those happy thoughts and get back to work. We get introduced to... Gurky? Uh, Some sort of midget Sasquatch. It talks in third person and can track the pig down. But when the pig is kidnapped by the Horn King's minions, Gurgle leaves because it's dangerous. But Terran is a courageous hero, and he boldly sneaks into the castle like a wimp. I mean, that's probably a smart thing to do, but Terran is one of those horrible dreamer people I keep hearing about. Wouldn't he just charge the castle like Don Quixote? Terran finds the Horn King, attempting to force the pig to see the Black Cauldron, but the pig... The pig refuses? The pig is intelligent? But if the pig is intelligent, why did it wander off earlier? It's what I would expect a dumb animal to do, but this thing is clearly smart enough that it shouldn't have wandered off. Which means the only reason this plot happens at all is because the plot needs it to happen. Okay. Terran heroically falls down and is forced to force the pig to find the Black Cauldron. If he doesn't, the pig will be killed. So, rather than sacrifice a dubiously intelligent pig to save the world from the Horned King, he gives in. But the king freaks him out, and the wine is apparently acid today, so Terran manages to help the pig escape. He gets captured, though. In the dungeons, he's moping and... Mm, I thought I heard a noise in here. <laughs> what on earth is happening? This random upper-class British girl just pops out of the ground and starts holding a casual conversation. <laughs> this is Princess, um, uh, Aloha, something like that. 
And this is her magic orb that disappears exactly four minutes later when the animators decide it's not worth the effort. She leads Terran through the castle. Terran loots a sword. Where did you get that sword? Uh, back there. You mean... Well, he's not going to use it. Oh. <laughs> the story isn't much, but this movie has its moments. They free a bard and stage an epic escape. The bard's name is... Uh, nope. Not gonna try. I think he's supposed to be the comedic sidekick. He's not funny, but he's not boring. He's more just strange, like a weird mole. What's it doing there? It doesn't really matter. It's just kind of strange. The sword turns out to be amazing and magical. I actually like the sword, but there's not a lot to say about it. After escaping, Terran praises himself as a brave hero, and Princess Alonzo says that everything he did was all because of the sword. Yep, that's right, Terran. No dreams for you. They argue, they split up, they reconcile, Fraggle comes back to help them track the pig again, and they track that pig right into a whirlpool that leads to magic fairy toddlers. You just can't make this stuff up. This is the fairy king of the magical happy kingdom that is Fairyland! Tell me, is the burning and killing still going on up there? Wow, that turned dark. The fairies promised to get the pig home, despite the fact that Terran was trying to get it away from home in the first place, and the need to hide the pig away from home is still there because the Horn King is still looking for it. Oh, wait, I know what happened. The animators decided it wasn't worth the effort again. But wait, if they can destroy the Black Cauldron, they'll be safe. So the group are led by a grumpy fairy to where the cauldron is in... Morva which sounds like a magic land, but it's actually a witch's hut in the swamp. The witches aren't very happy about the intrusion, but they offer to trade the cauldron for Terran's sword. He calls it his most valuable possession, but agrees. The witches drop them off next to the cauldron and laugh at them, saying that the cauldron is invulnerable, and that only someone jumping in and never returning can stop the cauldron's magic. So they sit around being depressed, and flirting to cheer each other up, when the Horn King finds them. Somehow. Why couldn't he find the cauldron all this time? Eh. Grogar runs away. With our heroes captured in chains, the king pulls off his true plan to become a god, raise a skeleton army, and take over the world! Okay, wait, 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 wait. You're a god, or using a god's power, and this is the best you can come up with? Ten points for a unique villain goal, but minus fifty for being a dumb way to use godly power. Haven't you even read the evil overlord list? Gollum returns and frees our heroes and sacrifices himself to stop the king's plan. No, Google! The cauldron begins sucking things in and kills the king without any involvement whatsoever from the heroes. What a chump. As the castle collapses, our heroes escape. The witches want the cauldron back, and Terran offers to trade for the most valuable thing to him. Gumbo. The witches agree, and it's a happy ending, as Old Guy, the Pig, and Grouchy Fairy watch through a puddle. Okay... How to go about this? I want to say first that this is one of the more unique stories I've seen. A pig as a tracking device, a cauldron as an evil artifact, all sorts of nifty little details, but really, that doesn't matter. Just because something is unique and creative doesn't make it good. Having a midget Sasquatch, a bard, a grouchy fairy, witches, a magical pig all thrown together oversaturates the film with details. This movie was meant to cover two books, and it is obvious that the people who made this loved the books. But in a movie, you gotta cut details. And if you're adapting it to be quite different from the original tale, like Disney does, you have to actually get your act together and pull everything into a proper story. If you can get past all of the uniqueness of the Black Cauldron, the story isn't that interesting. It's formulaic, random, and forgettable. It's too ambitious, especially with all the problems Disney Animation was going through. While it has its moments, it's not something that I enjoyed, and it doesn't really give any reason to come back to it. So that's The Black Cauldron. Have you seen this movie? If so, what did you think? Please let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell button to receive notifications whenever we put out a new video, and have a nice day.